Psalm 78. Should I share a testimony with you? <laughs> I was privileged some a few years ago to work with Bishop on some of the books that he, he wrote. Um, I was working with him on the books. <coughs> very, very, very tasking times because there are times I was I was the one typing. I had to learn how to type in two weeks. I went to a school to learn how to type. And uh, it wasn't easy, but Bishop needed somebody to help him. And at that time, I was the person who was available, but I didn't know how to type. I had to learn. And we, started, we wrote a number of books. I think we wrote about 17 books together. I, I say that because it's one of the things that I thank God so much for the privilege but I remember one of the days we were working and sometimes we go work for three, four, five hours continuously and then we we'll take a short break and uh, one such day we went on break there was a couch in the room we were working and so I sat on the couch and then to try and catch some few minutes of sleep because when he leaves like that, I don't know when he will come back immediately and say, look, he feels like continuing. But as I put my head down on the couch, I believe I began to see into the realm of spirit. And I looked into the sky and I saw a perfect blue sky. And I saw clouds in rectangles like how the ceiling is arranged. Perfect rectangles arranged like that. I said, wow, this is beautiful. <coughs> and I looked down to earth and I saw a number of young, or a number of people, I can't remember whether they could, because I couldn't really see their faces. Then all of a sudden, the people started walking to me, walking towards me, and formed a circle around me. And I said to myself that, wow, this is the same thing that happens to Bishop, that when Bishop finishes preaching after church. You see people just gather around him. Then I heard a voice saying that, it was a Tuesday, saying that from today, young people will gather around you. And I said, wow. And he said that, he said, this is the sign that when you go to church today, after church, usually he used to start, sit on stage like this by the piano. He said, don't move. Thank you very much. You see that they will start to walk towards you. Wow. So after church, <laughs> I was quite scared. I mean, I didn't really know what would happen, but I decided just to sit down. And then one of the one young boy, it's called Ima. He walked towards me. Then another person, before I realized there was a whole crowd of young people around me. I said, Wow. Why am I saying this? I am saying this that saying this to say that a lot of the things or not a lot in fact everything that happens in ministry is is an anointing and that anointing this is not the anointing that you have worked for but anointing that god has just given you that when you see somebody and people gathering around the person you may think that oh he is charismatic or he can talk like barack obama or, but it is it is an anointing. And Lady Pastor Bidia, I was very blessed to discover that this young boy called Ima, who was the first to come, he told me some years later that the devil had been ministering to him that I didn't like him. I didn't like him. I didn't like him. I didn't like him. And he told himself that, that same Tuesday, that after church, I am going to walk to Reverend Oko. If he doesn't mind me, I'm leaving the church. I tell you. So he walked and I don't, I mean, fortunately, or I mean, because I, I also don't know how I would have reacted, but, but Ima is one of my, in fact, he's one of my wonderful worship leaders. If you watch the um, Outdoor Praise 2007, He's the one who's leading a one he's on he's in Legon now. He started a church on Legon campus and so on. But he's doing so well. And I can imagine what would have happened if he had walked away. 
But I'm saying this because I want you to desire to desire an unction for this work that we are doing. Oh, you don't understand what I'm saying? An unction. A, an anointing. Not just a knowledge or principles. But we will, we will definitely talk about the principles and so on. But I yearn for an anointing. And I believe that during this, these meetings, God is going to give us an anointing for the work that we are doing. Amen. Psalm 78 is just a psalm that was laid on my heart. I just want to read. We'll be taking a very short break soon. MFR, do we have them ready now? At 12 o'clock. Okay. No problem. Then maybe we'll have a short question time after I read the psalm. And then we'll go into this. Joshua. It says, Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. My mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard <coughs> and known, and our fathers have told us. Verse 4. We will not hide them from their children showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he had done for he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. Amen. That a generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children. Verse 7. That they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. And might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation. A generation that said not their heart aright, and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. The children of Ephraim, being armed and carrying bows, turned back in the days of battle. Amen. Simply what this verse is saying is what? That God wants us to not hide the things that we know from our children and we should show them to the generations to come the praises of the Lord. Amen. Alright. Well, um, I finished with talking about the heart. Amen. I ask you to open it for me. Thank you. And uh, the next thing that I want us to do during this time is to go through this little booklet. It's revised. Uh, a few things have been removed. A few things have been added. But, um, Um, MFR tells me that um, it will be ready by 12 o'clock. Is that not so? So, is there anybody here who has a question? A question you'd like to ask? There is no shame. <laughs> There is no shame. Okay. Okay. Why are you asking what you're asking? Why am I? Because it's like most of the parents themselves don't recognize that they don't see the seriousness and I guess they don't really know much about the safe church and they treat it like babysitting or 
you know, just keep my children for me for a while and I'll come back for them. So if you are changing diapers, if you are even telling them, if you like the camp, encouraging them to bring their kids in, it's like, I mean, what are you guys doing? Uh, who will answer that question? <laughs> convincing the parents. Uh, I don't think that there's much you can do. About the parents. I mean, one of the things that I know you can do to help is visit. When you visit the children at home, they know that you are serious. But one of the things that I think that you must convince yourself also that it's the church. And then if you control what is going on inside, I mean, it really doesn't matter what they may think or say. But. Okay. 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 They still stay with their moms upstairs. But from then, when they are brought downstairs, all the kids the same. We have praise and worship okay. every morning. And these are like just two and my daughter is just two and a half. And she sings all the songs. You see, so it makes the parents see that the children are getting something. So I think that sometimes too, just like yesterday, you said that we have to fight for our church. Yeah. So sometimes you have to speak yeah. up to the pastor. Oh, I think that the pressure is, is more yeah. on us than on the parents. Yeah. So if the parents get to see what the children are doing, do. they will believe that okay. it's something good is going on okay. in the basement. Amen. All right. Sevenfold vision of saved. Sevenfold vision of saved. All these things are in the manual, but they are not in yet. But I just want to start talking about because there are a lot of things to talk about. And there will be more questions as we go along, I know. And if there's anything you want to also do to contribute, you can. Okay. All right. The first one, to bring up our children in the ways of God. To bring up our children in the ways of God. Proverbs 22 verse 6. The Bible says that for lack of vision, our people perish. Is that not so? What verse is that? For lack of knowledge, sorry. But what is the verse that talks about vision? For lack of knowledge, sorry. That is a problem, sorry. Sorry, where there is no vision, the people perish. Proverbs 29, 18. So, this, these seven points are just to, to set our vision as saved. Do you understand? So that our churches will not perish. Our churches will not die. And the first thing is that we want our children to be brought up in the ways of God. Amen. If that is at the forefront of your mind, you will not allow your youth church to degenerate into a dance group. I don't know what it is about dance. The young people, they can dance for, for a long time. They have energy, they'll dance, and you see them dancing. I mean, anytime I see a child, a young person dancing, I ask myself, how many scriptures can he quote? No, for me, that, yeah. How many scriptures do you know? Oh, you can't dance your way into heaven. You have to. <laughs> you go, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
you come and then Peter will be standing there and say, uh-huh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah is the highest praise. You'll be cracking and say, uh-huh. Okay. So let me in. So it's not like that. You don't just let people in. So, and if you are a pastor here also, it's one of the things that you'd want to also monitor. That the people are being brought up in God. There, sh- there should be a God factor. There should be there should be training. Do you understand me? Proverbs 22, verse 6. It says, What? Train up a child in the way. And then what? When he is old, he will not depart from it. Powerful. Number two, second aspect is to raise the next generation which will continue and improve on the Lighthouse Chapel International denomination. Amen. We, as we are, as we are having our churches and church services, we should have the church in mind. Look, a time is going to come eh? I mean, I don't know how to say it so that I don't sound some way. Most of the church growth will come from within. Because that is how denominations grow. There's a period where your church increase is from evangelism and outreach but a time is going to come that is if we do the right things that our church will begin to grow naturally our church will light our chapel will just grow naturally like how people grow up and they are Roman Catholics and they don't even know why they are Roman Catholic yeah or they are Presbyterian, they don't know why they are Presbyterian. Of course, it also has its dangers, but <clears throat> it is God's it is God's plan and God's will that when something is established, it should move from one generation to another, like I read earlier on. And so Lighthouse Chapel, and if you listen to the founder, he himself says that, listen, the church is not for him. He has not willed any of the church buildings to any of his children. He himself, he is trying even to move away so that the church will run without him. Because the church has to live beyond him. And one of the key factors in seeing that this church will live beyond our generation is how we bring them up. Oh, you don't understand. How we bring them up, we must deliberately, deliberately tell them that this is your church. This is your turn, and I am your pastor. I am your. Is, do you have a, who's your pastor? Oh, why? Well, don't feel intimidated. Don't say the truth. Have you ever visited any other church on a Sunday? You can't remember. You cannot even remember when he went to, for the past how many years. The only person's voice he knows is my voice. Do you understand me? And so at a point, there's this attachment to you. And to this, just like me, I also cannot see myself in Hezekiah Walker's church. Do you know Hezekiah Walker? I saw his billboard when I was going out. I looked at a nice billboard. I, I, the voice I know and the food I know to eat is Bishop Dagiwa Mills. And I am Lighthouse Chapel International through and through. And my children also will come and take over. Psalm 71, verse 17 and 18. It says what? O God, Thou hast taught me from my youth. And hitherto have I declared thy wondrous Uh Now also when I am old and gray headed O God forsake me not until I have showed thy strength Unto this generation And thy power To everyone that is to come This generation must see God's strength 
and the next generation must see his power. Amen. Listen, it, it should be on your heart as a teacher that the, the, the next generation should even do better than we are doing. The things they know, the preachings they've heard, the camps they've attended, it is impossible that when they, they should do better than we did. In the USA, the next generation after us, if we were not able to go out as missionaries, they should be able to go out as missionaries. But we, when we came, we came with a different agenda. When we came into this country, we came to become Bill Gates. But the point, we realized that it's not easy to become. <laughs> the thing has become a Zulia. Yeah? When we're children, we're watching LA Law on TV. Then we said, when we come to America, we'll be senior partner at a law firm. Heinz and Kleins. And Kraus and Goldenberg. And then those Heinz, Kleins, Goldenberg, and Apia. You've seen your name in the realm of the spirit. <laughs> it doesn't even go Heinz, Kraus, Goldenberg and Asamoah Boati. <laughs> so you, when you were coming to this country, you had a big dream. Oh, you don't understand what I'm saying. So right now, when they say we need people to go to Granada, go to Guyana, go to say, oh, 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 Bishop, this is your dream. No, but the next generation, we cannot infuse them with that poison. Oh, you don't understand what I'm saying. Oh, your amens are growing weak. I don't know whether. No. So the next generation, they should they should come. They should be groomed as lighthouse people, and then the things that we couldn't do, they should be able to do them. We should be sending from U.S. to Afghanistan, U.S. to Kabul, U.S. to uh, Colombia, uh, places, Iraq. We go there to fight anyway. Our young people are there shivering. They get because of green card, they've gone to their fighting somebody's battle. <laughs> Barack Obama said you bring them back. He still hasn't brought them back. Will he bring them? Hey, it's not easy. Yeah. yeah, it's not easy to bring the soldiers back from Iraq. Oh. So when I come, you know, the troops will be withdrawing the troops within a period of five years. Five months we're bringing the troops back into America. America, Austria. It's not easy to withdraw troops. <laughs> we are watching. Do you see? But I'm saying that the generation, they should grow up as lighthouse people. How many of us know that we, maybe we should close the eyes to answer that? How many of us have know that we have fallen short of the lighthouse vision in this country? Yeah. We look at lighthouse the heart of our bishop, what he desires the church to be, we have fallen short. I mean, as for that one, we must all, myself, we are all here. But the younger ones, we can bring them up in the true streamline of lighthouse so that they'll come and improve upon what we did. Is that not so? <laughs> Haggai 2 verse 9. What does it say? Zephaniah Haggai, Zachariah Malachi. Do you know Zephaniah Haggai? Zachariah Malachi. Place for the New York Mets. So the glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, say the Lord. I will give peace, say the Lord of hosts. Amen. So the glory of saved. Venice, you cannot come and do the things that your parents did. Bernard, do you understand me? We are looking closely at your generation and we are seeing, we are, we are investing in you to see you fulfill the heart of this ministry. Do you understand me? Because you have not been entangled with certain, you didn't come here with an idea that you are coming to be third partner in a law firm on Wall Street. You grew up in the ranks from where? New York, eating McDonald's and things normal child uh, so we, as for you we can send you amen hallelujah the third vision 
or the third part of the vision is to build a workforce of fearless tiny soldiers of the cross who will defend the cause of Christ whilst they are still young Amen 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 In Lighthouse Chapel one of the things that we believe in is young people doing the work Amen Serving God is not like getting a driver's license where you need to be 18 or 16 before to vote When it comes to serving God we believe that the children should also be trained to do God's work Amen. Because in light of that, we don't only believe in Christianity, we believe in the work of God. We don't believe in Christianity. Simple, normal Christianity, do good. Like Wesley Girls, their motto, which is not in the Bible. Right, left, do things, swing about and shake your waist. Where are you, Wesley Girls? And so say it for us here. It says what? Say it. Live pure, speak true, right wrong. For which king? King of pop. It, uh, we don't see what you are saying. Forward match, backward, left turn, about ten. <laughs> How did I even get into Wesley Girls? The soldiers. No, 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 no. We are it's not ordinary Christianity. Your light out the point you come into the church. We are we, we give you a gun. Yeah. When you come, we equip you with a gun. Start shooting. It's not just come and drink tea and then go away, write notes. No, you are coming, we equip you, you go, and the children too will be equipped. Amen. The children will also be equipped and in saved. Part of our agenda is to equip the children. Amen. I remember once I went on. I like this telling this testimony because I it, it opened my eyes. Because throughout I've been teaching the children how to evangelize. Mem- we memorize scriptures that have to do with evangelism and all that. <clears throat> and then one day I went on evangelism. The whole church was going. I decided let me go with the children. So I went with five of the little kids who were around me. We entered a beer bar. When we entered the beer bar, I decided that oh, I'm the big man, so let me do the preaching. So I preached. I said, Oh, you know, you must give your life to Christ. Jesus is coming soon. Blah blah blah. And I said, Nice preaching. And I we prayed with the people. Then went to the second place. I preached. Then when we went to the third place. I said, No. This same Ima boy. Same Ima. I said, Ima, preach. How old was he? I can't remember. He said, Uncle. Please, I want to talk to you about Jesus Christ. The man said, oh, okay. Because we're a group and we are surrounding him. He said, please, do you know that the Bible says, the soul that sinned shall die? I said, hey. And it's appointed unto man once to die. Hey, slow down. <laughs> wow. Hey, wow. The guy had come with some very well scriptures. It's the death so. The soul that's in it shall die. The wages of sin is death. They are pointed at the man and say, Hey, small boy, you are a pastor, eh? Say, please, you need to give your life to Christ. <laughs> hey. Then, I, then the next person, I said, Of course, I became encouraged. So I said, John Dark, it's your turn. John, they say, Sir, please, you know the Bible says that for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. <laughs> say, if you die, will it be gain? I say, hey, <laughs> these small boys, they are going to <laughs> say, everybody was die, die, die. Oh, I'm not joking. Oh, that is why God does with young, tiny, fearless soldiers. Say, if you die, will it begin? <laughs> With their shrill voices. I said, no, oh, when I go about. Oh, anytime, remember Abokobi, when we then we'll go into the town. Anytime we go for a camp, we'll go into the town and do evangelism. 
teaching the children how to do the work. Like I was saying, last week I let some of the young people preach. It's on the internet. You can go and watch. Go and listen to it. Joel 2, 28. <coughs> Joel 2, 28. It says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And what? And your... Oh, please, turn your Bible, spiritual teachers. Turn your Bibles. Very nice. And your what? Sons and daughters shall do what? Shall, shall color. Shall join the dots. Do mathematics. <laughs> They'll prophesy. Sons and daughters prophesying. Amen. And then what will happen? The old men would they be they like sleeping, so they'll dream dreams. <laughs> and your young men. Isaiah 8 18. Isaiah 8 18. All of this is in this manual. After this, we'll take a short break and then we'll come back. Amen. It says, What well, behold, I and my classmates I and the mummies and the daddies I and who? and the children I and the children myself and the children have done what? whom the Lord has given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts which dwelleth in the Mount Zion Amen I and the children I and the children. I and the children. So if Reverend Oko has been called, it's not just me. I have been called. And then the children who are with me also have been called. For what? For signs. If Reverend Oko has been called to do a sign, the children have also been called to do a sign. If Reverend Oko is doing wonders, the children should also do wonders. Amen. Amen. A few years ago, I came here with some young people. They came to do wonders. Oh, you didn't see the wonders that they did. It was very powerful. I've backslidden, but I'm coming back to my first love. Next year, by the grace of God, I'll bring a new group, fresh young people. You haven't seen them before. These ones, they all have beards and they're looking for girlfriends. Look, look at his licking his lips. We're looking for guests. Guess. <laughs> they think I don't know. They're looking for guests. You know, I'll come with a fresh group. Fresh, little, little, little. I've already started training them. No, they are not looking for guests. They are looking for God. <laughs> but I and the children. Amen. When you sit in that, that church... And you are teaching, preaching to them. Know that both you and them have been called for signs and for wonders. Amen. Amen. Point number four. To create an attraction to counteract the many distractions that Satan has placed out there in the world to lure children. We cannot lie. One of the reasons why we have a lot of church activities is to keep the children busy. To keep them busy. Recently, I'm dealing with a young girl. One of her problems is parties. Parties. She likes parties. It's another person. <laughs> you know, when I was growing up, I was telling Lady Pastor Billy, I don't know, I was saying that when I was growing up, I used to say, G for G. That's girls, I told all of you girls for good and then B for B, boys for bad but now I've changed my mind the girls are bad hey. G for B, girls for bad and then... oh, I don't understand so G and G that's girls good and then B, B, boys bad but I've, I've, I've scraped that theory but I remember this younger when she was younger any time we had Saturday rehearsals and we say, come for rehearsals. We say, oh, I have a party here. 
And I remember once speaking to the mother. He said, listen, we are trying to, you know, bring up the children in a certain way to understand that God's work is more important than all these. So she said, ah, so what? My child shouldn't have a life. My child shouldn't have a life. I remember clearly. I remember even personally apologizing to this mother once. Said, I beg you, I'm sorry. Will not. Now, now, the girl can sneak from home. Oh, if I tell you the age, you'll be sad. 12, 13. Yeah. So when people say that, oh, Ghana, we don't have problems, I laugh. How can you say Ghana, we don't have problems? Our young people are cool. Bad boys and girls. Bad boys. You are looking back. There is that the fan behind you. Bad boys and girls. Yeah, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. But one of the things that we are trying to do in church is also to create an attraction. To, to attract them to something. You see, so that is one of the things. We, we, we need to also pray to God for grace to make Christianity attractive. To make Christianity. And making Christianity attractive is me personally, if you ask my opinion, is it's not to try to compete with the, the world. That if the world, if Michael Jackson can dance, thriller, thriller, now that I come to the church and I say, you to do this. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I give, I live my life for you. I mean, I, we can't compete. Do you understand me? <laughs> we can't compete with Michael Jackson. Yeah. So the attraction should be the love of God, the spirit of God, the service of God. You know, things that have to... Because, you see, <clears throat> anybody who tells you that we have to form a Christian disco to prevent our children from going to the disco, the person has made a mistake. Because the love is for God, not the activity. Or oh, you don't understand what I'm saying? Yeah. The love should be, you should, you should point them to the love of God. Not the love of having fun. So now the fun, we are transferring the fun into the church. You will lose them. Because we can never compete with the world. But we have to, we have to make Jesus attractive. Me, when I was a child, I really love Jesus. I cannot lie to you. I, 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 could, I could sing hymns and cry. I could sing songs. And when I, when I hear the song and what it does to me, and then I listen to the worldly songs, I realize that no, these ones, they are not, they are, they are not giving me the same. Uh, that is why in church we, we, we try follow music, look for spiritual music, get the kids' iPods. When I went to Australia, uh, none of the guys are here. So people are, <laughs> I think a 13 or 14 year old boy when I looked on his iPod the music one of them great sex and this, and then they listen to them they leave the, he leaves the iPod on overnight and he had brought it to the camp and he had left it overnight in the room soaking in tapes so I told the pastor that listen no, I actually threw a challenge to the young people. I said, listen, I do not claim to know everything, but I know that there is sweetness in Jesus. So, let just wrap all your music for only one month. And I'm going to replace it with Christian music and preaching. And just listen to the preaching for one month. And then let's see whether, if you want to go back, then God was not good enough for you. Do you see? Oh, the pastor called me from me. He said, look, the kids have changed. They've, oh, it's true. You can clap to the glory of God. Now they listen to CDs. They, they don't listen to the worldly music anymore. Because there is, we must have confidence and faith in the sweetness that is in Jesus Christ. <laughs> I tell you. Amen. So that is one of the things that saved is also trying to do. The next thing, okay, the, first, the verse for that is 1 John 2.16. 1 
For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Number five. To give the children something eternally profitable to do with their lives and their time. As they work for God, you tell them that, listen, what you are doing, it is reaping for you a reward in heaven. Amen. 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 <laughs> you don't believe me. Luke 2, verse 42. It says what? And when he was how old? Twelve. Twelve years. What did he do? Very good. Forty-nine. That was the same Luke too. And he said unto them, Yeah. Do you not want me to do my father's business? And when he was twelve years old, when he was 12 years old, he asked his parents, don't you want me to serve God? <laughs> oh, that are 12 year olds who ask us, God, don't you, my, mommy, don't you want me to serve God? Amen. Ah! Amen. says, that's what we are yearning for. And we will see it. Amen. We will see it. We will give our children something eternally profitable. Amen. You know, like my kids, a lot of them have finished high school and you, um, in Ghana, you apply for universities. There are a few of them. So when you get the admission to the university, it's a, it's a miracle. You know, so they can say, oh, Reverend Okwa, I've gained admission to tech. They gave me um, land economy. And so I said, I've gained admission to um, Legon. They gave me a uh, Bachelor of Arts, Sociology and Economics. This one says, Reverend Okwa, they've given me, and I said, I hope you know that that degree you're actually going to do is degree in ministry and spiritual affairs. BSc ministry. I tell them, I'm sure you know as you're entering the university, your main purpose for entering oh, this is what Reverend Oku, we know. We know. That entering the university, even though my parents think I'm going to become a lawyer, I know I'm becoming a missionary. <laughs> I'm going. It's not that I'm not going. I am going. I'm going out. And I tell them, do your best. Learn. Get what pass well. Don't fail. Don't fail too. Remo you cannot involve yourself in all the things that other people do. You say because now you are a soldier of Christ, and he that is on the, you don't entangle yourself with the things of this world, the cares of this life. So go do your best. But the truth, and you know that when you are completing and you are receiving your degree like this, it's BSc Af Afghanistan. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I don't like my preaching. That's why I'm saying that your generation has to move away quickly so that we can begin to preach this one to them. Now, you, because you people, you came here with Einstein, Krauss, Goldenberg, and Asamoah Bwatin. That was the vision. <laughs> Which hasn't happened yet. And I don't know whether Father released law firms and senior partnerships. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, because some of the kids that are growing up, they'll grow up with American passports. They can go anywhere in the world. And that will, they'll be the generation that we can say, we can send you. He will go. Unless they, he won't go. <laughs> he does not understand. <laughs> he will go. He said that he was 12 years old. And he asked his parents, don't you want me to serve God? Don't you want me to? He knows. He knows what my heart is. He knows what my heart is. Don't you? The children will ask us, don't you want us to, don't you want me to serve God? 
and we'll be there looking at them and we'll see that we now not knowing our hearts. Our, we wanted them to become Obama, Barack Obama. But our children will serve God. Amen. Amen. That's what number five. Okay. Second Timothy 4, 7 and 8 also under the same point. It says what? It says, I have fought a good fight. Second Timothy 4, 7. I have fought a good fight. Is it correct? I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me on that day, and not to me only, but unto all of them also that love his appearing. Amen. Amen. The sixth vision of saved, or the sixth, what it called, is to create an environment to train laborers. The training ground to train laborers. Second Timothy two fifteen. What does it say? Study. Approved. Yes, a workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. We are going to train our young people. Amen. Amen. John 9, 4. What does it say? It says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. A lot of the things that our young people are doing today, when they grow, they won't be able to do it then. So we are creating that environment. And the last thing, and then we'll take a break after this, is to place an importance on the things the Lord Jesus said were important. Amen. Amen. Same John 9, 4. says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. Night comes when no man can work. So basically, this is our vision. For I Church, or K Church, J Church, Y Church. Amen. What's the first thing? What's the first aspect or the first thing? To bring up our children in the ways of God. Amen. Number two. Prove upon. The Lighthouse Chapel International Denomination. Amen. Number three. Yeah. Yeah. And what verse is that? Joel 2.28 and Isaiah 8.18. Isaiah 8.18, I like it very much. What does it say? It says, I and the children whom God has given me are for signs and for wonders. Okay. Number four. Yes. To counteract the many distractions Satan has placed out there in the world to lure children. Including what? Television. Pop stars. Fashion, humanism, American Idol, witchcraft. You know, there are a lot of children are into witchcraft. A lot of children are into witchcraft. They are into casting spells. If you like, go and try praying for one. You'll be surprised. I remember I went to a camp in the UK. The whole camp became a deliverance camp. I tell you, there was one girl, she had a demon. Eh? The demon, when I started, a Ghanaian girl. Oh. No, no, she was Jamaican. She was Jamaican. The demon started speaking Yoruba. Pure. 
with a man's voice. <laughs> when we start, ah, Joshua, where you at that camp? And uh, this one, uh, the marks of Jesus. You were there. When we start to worship, then the whole place, Kai, the demons will begin to scream. The whole camp became a demon deliverance session. But the kids, they do which camp after school, when they go home, they don't have anything to do. So that's why you should give them the makane. And then let them soak it in. Let them, even my little boy, I, I let him listen to my preaching. I let him listen to my preaching. I said that he can tell me things that I've preached about, even if for nothing. Just so that he will not, <laughs> I, I don't mind looking for things to do. Or, because your people, they can do idle things. Pa. Pa. And the, the, the TV stations that they are more. Cartoon Network, this, that, this. Hey. Man. <laughs> oh, crap. The internet is there for them. You can't use like technology if you don't have some, you are behind time. Everybody has internet in his house, wireless, phones, now I touch. Oh, but will prevail. Oh, prevail, cry. Amen. What's the next point? Something eternally profitable to do with their lives and their time. I'm so happy when Bishop asked me to form a musical group. You know, and we traveled around. One day when they go to heaven, at least they can say that, oh, when I was four years old or when I was seven years old, I traveled to go and preach. It's such a blessing, oh. Yeah. Eternally profitable. Not that I was Miss, I was Miss um, LeBron High School. 19, uh, 2009. Then you have your picture is in there. I mean, all these men, all these pageants, and who are they? Because of that, your children are not eating. Who are when you? I, <coughs> you say, I'm fat. I have church members, like, I'm fat. I say, I'm fat. I say, Look at your mother. When you see your mother's bottles and you look at your bottles, you see that is the same. You can even starve yourself to, to your bottles. The size will be because you will be a pussycat yourself one day. You know you'll be a pussycat yourself. <laughs> to the poor pussycat. No, 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 no. You will be a pussycat yourself one day. You'll be a pussycat yourself one day. <laughs> so why? <laughs> Do something eternally profitable with your life. And stop thinking that you are high school musical. Oh, just haven't you seen the color of your skin? Before you are even saying that you are going to become this Hannah Montana. Oh, our children will do something eternally profitable. Eternally profitable. Oh, I feel very happy. Do you feel happy? Yeah. And when he was 12 years old, he said unto them, How is it that you looked for me? Do you not wish that I be about my father's business? Amen. Our children will play piano. I'll, I'll talk about the training and training in the churches. And one of the main training for our young people is music. And something that you must contend for. Bernard, I don't think that if Bernard was playing guitar, he would still be in church. I mean, if he wasn't, I think that one of the things that keeps the young people in church is the ability to play. And me have put a curse on all my children who can play piano and they go and play it for the world. That from that, the, mute, the day they put their finger on their piano, is they are cursed. This is one of the things that I do a lot is cursing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, spiritual author, I've been cursing people by heart. Recently, they were going to do BEC exam and Ghana. One of the things that is that a poor, huh? if you hear somebody has 10 ones, don't even salute him, just pass by him. They bring the apple to the exam room. Then we have chemistry in the morning and then physics in the afternoon. 
between the chemistry and the physics, they bring the apple and work it for the children and then go and then they work it in the next 30 minutes. And I, I told my children, anybody who follows her, I've cursed you already. So a parent called me and said, oh, hey, Reverend Oko, I, I hear you have cursed the children. I said, yes, I've cursed them. Oh, eh, uh, eh. Uh. So my son is confused. I said, why is he going? He said, oh, because uh, they, they brought their point. Everybody was looking here alone. He didn't know whether he should look. I said, no, no, no. He doesn't need it. He'll pass. He'll pass. I said, nah. Because my son was confused. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He was confused. The father called me. He said, oh, my son is confused. He doesn't know. I said, oh, no, you don't worry. You'll be okay. Yeah, you'll be okay. He said, ah. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> but I, I must confess, I felt a bit bad, but I didn't. But <clears throat> any of you who go and play secular music like Michael Jackson, I've cursed you. I don't even need to curse you. You die at 50 by a heart attack, by, by drug overdose. I don't even have to curse you. Look at Michael Jackson today. Who was as gifted as him? miserable life. Nothing to be admired. What can you admire about his life? What? Tell me. No, genuinely, genuinely for quality of life. Quality of life. Oh, stop it. Stop it. The hair, is it his hair? Eh? Yeah. No, is it his, is it his hair? I don't think it's his hair. Oh. He has hair transplant. Oh, it's, 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 it's weave on. It's a weave. It's a weave. Eh, because it's too kusu. <laughs> For a 50 year old, ah, it's too black. Either he has put in eh, fifty year old man thick oh, I don't know, it's a weave on. It's <laughs> it's share mommy, share mommy. Anyway, six to sustain a force, amen, to place an importance on the things. Amen. Father, we thank you so much for our lives and for this opportunity to come together. Lord, we have not finished. There's still more to do. I pray, oh God, that you will help us to become better. Father, we pray for our nation and our land and our church. And I thank you, oh God, that salvation is coming to us in this land. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone said, Amen. All right, we'll take a short break, 30 minutes. Is that okay? Oh, okay. We'll take a. We believe you have been blessed and transformed by this powerful teaching by Reverend Oko Bate Doku. For more information on Reverend Oko's teachings, write to Save Productions, P.O. Box 114, Kolebu, or call us on 27 Furthermore, you can email saved.lighthousechapelinternational.net. May God richly bless you.